the wind tree control could be used in many different use cases. It could be used to create some kind of navigation control for your UI to show a hierarchical user interface of various menu items, or it could be used to visualize your hierarchical data. It could also be used to show a grid-like display of hierarchical data as well. So let's check out the various ways we can interact with the control. So on my form here, I will locate I'll locate the Ultra Tree in my Visual Studio toolbox and dump it onto my form as we have here. Now we could use data binding, we could write code to populate the nodes. So what I want to do is I'll click on the tree and let's scroll down to its properties down at the bottom. The view style property is one of the most important properties on here because it dictates what type of user interface it will render for you. I'll start off with standard. So standard, we basically have several. We have standard, Outlook Express, grid, and freeform. Standard mode is just your plain old tree with nodes and the nodes have children. So if I click on the tree again and I go to the nodes property, it's basically a collection of nodes. So I could add a root and some children nodes and some siblings and do the same thing. And the way it works is you basically just add node objects and nodes consist of the actual key that represents some kind of, let's say if you want to use some kind of primary key or other property of your underlying object that specifies uniqueness. The key should be unique. If you're talking about a file system, if you wanted to blast through your file system and pick up file info or directory info objects, what you want to do is, or what I'd recommend is that you make the key of each node the full path or the, or the path to that specific file or folder that should ensure uniqueness because you have to have unique keys so you could set a key in here something unique then you could set the node text right here you know to something whatever you want so you know menu items or maybe a, key, a value that makes it distinguishable so whatever you want to put in the text the tag property is very useful if you have like your business objects that you want to stick in the tag you know a lot of times people do that they'll take whatever object it is that are being represented by nodes and stick it in the tag so that you can cast it and pull it back out and use its methods if you're blasting through the file system you want may, you want to stick the file info or directory info object that you've just created into the tag so you could pull it out cast it and call its methods on there if you wish to perform operations on the file or directory and let's just click this right now. We'll do this at design time. You could also do this at runtime with a with, you know, loop construct or whatever other construct that you have. And if we click on the events here, we want to handle the after select event. And what you do is you could find out what has been selected by doing something like this. And we'll do something like this dot ultra tree dot active new dot text. And as you see here, when I get to the properties, you could do text or you can grab the tag and cast it and get whatever the whatever properties you want in there. Um, you get the key. So whatever you want. But for this example, keep it simple. We'll just pop up the text. And when I run the application as I expand the nodes and when I click on nodes that's when I get this pop-up but again a really use case scenario for this would be imagine having another control here maybe a bunch of individual editor controls or a grid or whatever it is that whenever I click on each one of these guys here I'll populate the main forms elements based on whatever I clicked on so you could do something like that with the grid and the tree so let's just comment this out because we're not going to use it. Notice that I have a bunch of different types of table adapters on the form that are filling up my Northwinds data set with employees, customers, orders, and a bunch of other items here that create a related data, data set within memory. So I'll show you the other way we could work with this. So if I go back to the designer here and go back to the nodes property and just reset it and blow everything away, what I want to do is click on the tree and go to its data source property and let's set it to the Northwind data set binding source. And when I do that notice how immediately the tree orients itself so that 
it creates automatically one node in the root directory for each data table in the data set. So this is specific to a data set. It creates one node per data table in the data set. The cool thing about this is that each one of these nodes has a collection of columns, but we don't see them now because remember we're in standard view. What you need to do now is to take advantage of this, we'll go to grid mode. So view style is grid. And by doing that, and let's just dock this to fill. Uh, we, we have a property exposed here directly on the smart tag, so that's very convenient. And when I run it, let's see what this looks like. Let's just maximize it. So we have the root of the tree filled with plain and simple nodes. And when I expand this, notice how I have a grid with a certain type of schema that represents order details. If I expand it again, there's nothing there because there's another relation in the data set that I'm not pulling its members. So if I go to customers, notice that we could expand customers and because in the data set, orders are part of the customers through data relation and order details as well. So we have, we could start at this level of the hierarchy. So go to customers, orders, and order details. And if we collapse that, we can just go to products and the orders that belong to the products. Notice how, again, it's hierarchical. All these data relations are automatically picked up. So orders again here. This is like the root level. So the order and the order ID, and then finally that relation that I didn't populate. Then we have employees. And we have employees for this relation. Notice how now we, we're talking about employees and their orders. So if I expand that, we have then, again, you know the drill by now, so employees and their orders. Then this relation here, I'm not, I'm not pulling anything based on that relation. Same thing. So you get the point, right? So what's going on here is that a node is created for each data table, and then all of those entities are filled up according to just those lines of code that I wrote to populate the data tables with the table adapters and then anything that's related is automatically generated and shown in a hierarchical related and nested fashion as you see here. The cool thing about setting something like this up is that you can have one control that shows many different entities no matter, no matter what level it's on. So there's a difference between using this. So for example, if, if you look at this, this is pretty much like WinGrid, right, in, in a certain respect. Well, it kind of is only within one node. But then, if, so if I expand this entity here, this has one schema. But if I expand this node on the same level, it's a different schema. So if you can handle, or if you, if you prefer to have the, the ability to show multiple different types of schemas, even within the same level, then the tree is the one that you want to use because you could also enable editing and saving back to your business objects just like you can in WinGrid. It's just that the view is a little different and the paradigm is slightly different to work with. But all the embeddable editors and all of the draw filters and creation filter support that you're familiar with in WinGrid also applies to the WinTree. So again, just wanted to show you guys this control because there's a lot of other controls that people don't take advantage of and I just want to make sure that you know it's here and you can use it to your advantage. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.